Welcome to Farming Simulator. We are going to have a quick little chat today about how to install Universal Auto Load onto a mod tractor, but without actually editing the mod. This is a whole new system. It was introduced by Loki in the next version of Universal Auto Load. I've been lucky enough to have a beta preview of it. And today we're going to use that beta preview to show you how you can actually add Universal Auto Load to any vehicle or trailer without ever going into GE, without ever even unzipping files. Let's get into it. First, we're gonna start off in the game. I know that's kind of weird because normally you'd start off by going into and unzipping files and going to GE. But first, we're gonna go into the game. All we need for this tutorial is whatever map we're on, easy dev controls, this is gonna be key, and universal auto load. And then whatever mods you want to do. In this example, we're going to be using three different mods. We're going to be using the MAN TGX platform. We're going to be using the Unimog 401 and the Oracle TX 130. A trailer, uh, a truck, actually in two different trucks. So we're going to go into there and get them set up. So let's head on into the game. We're jumping into Comlands because Comlands loads nice and fast. All right, here we are in Comlands. Here we are with the three trucks we picked. What we're going to do as soon as we want to set those mods up is first thing we're going to do is get them in the game. So we have our Unimog, we have our MAN TGX, all with the platform setting. It's, this has multiple configurations. And we have the Oracle TX-130 in the bail trailer configuration. The key here is, as you can see on each vehicle, it needs to have straps. Universal Auto Load requires those straps for it to work. So for each vehicle, we have the version that has straps. Next step, once you've loaded into the game, we're gonna jump over to our settings file. Now in our settings file, this is our game settings file, in the same folder as your game settings file, you're gonna scroll up here and you're gonna see a mod settings folder. And in that mod settings folder, we're gonna go to universal auto load. Now, if you're wondering where this is, this is gonna be in your Farming Simulator 2022 directory. This is basically where your save games are. So your, your save game one, save game two, all that kind of stuff, screenshots in your log. As long as you can find that folder, you can find your mod settings folder. We're gonna open up Universal Auto Load. Now, Universal Auto Load is a configuration file in XML that gets generated the first time you load this new version of Universal Auto Load. If your file doesn't look like this, delete the file that was there and reload the game. It'll automatically generate this file. Today, we're gonna to be focusing in here on the vehicle configurations. And we're gonna use the mod example as our example. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment this line. And this is obviously referring to the FS, the 20 foot gooseneck, but we're not gonna use the 20 foot gooseneck. We're gonna use something else. So let's pick which one we're gonna start with. So let's start with the Oracle. So let's go into our, our file folder. And let's sort of, let's do two things. First, we're gonna click here. We're gonna copy this. This is the actual folder, these mod folder name. We're gonna copy that. I'm gonna put it here, copy and paste it. Over in the code, we're going to copy and paste it right here. Perfect. Let's go back to the Explorer. And we're going to pretend like we're going to unzip it. See how I kind of double clicked on it? We're going to unzip it, but we're not actually going to unzip it. All we're going to do is we're going to look for the .xml file. So if this is moddesk.xml, there's going to be one more .xml file in each mod. And this is the source file for the mod itself. And what I'm going to do here is do the same thing, TX130. So I can't really copy it because it's still in the zip file, but I can type that. So TX130, that's pretty easy. So we're going to go back to our code, TX130. Done. Save. Now, there's two things that are, there's a couple things here in this file that we want to do. For the TX130, uh, we're not going to enable side loading because, well, it has sides. So we're not going to enable side load. Side loading and reloading is if you want to be able to load into this vehicle with a 
a forklift or other forked vehicle to load pallets or something into the side, it doesn't use the auto load. So we're going to turn that off. We don't need the side loading because it has sides. It wouldn't work. Set that to false. Then it, in this options, we're going to do one more thing. And this is the key to how this works. We're going to set to uh, enable debug equals true. And that's going to be where we go. Now that we see that the preview debug boxes, debug mode is showing up, let's start to adjust these numbers so that they fit what we need. First thing we're going to do is switch back to our settings and we're going to start playing with these numbers. Now, what these numbers mean is there's two things. There's an offset, which is where this first, the small box fits within the vehicle. And then the second one is how big it is. So let's make it the right size first. So first off, let's make it a little bit wider. So let's say, let's make it about three. Let's just go for there and see what it's, see what happens. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to switch back to the game. Then I'm going to go to open our console commands. I'm going to hit the tilde key, which is the top left of your keyboard, just underneath the escape button. And I'm going to type in UAL. UAL import, and then I'm going to hit tab and it's going to finish typing it for me. So we're going to do import user configurations. I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see that it just made it a little bit wider. Super great. It's a little bit too wide. So let's, let's correct that. So we're going to switch back to the code real quick. We're not going to exit the game. Let's make this two point, I don't know, five. Hit save. Switch back to the game. And we're going to do hit the up arrow here. We still have this menu open. We're not closing the menu right now. Hit enter. And as you can see, it's going to bring it smaller. Maybe we get to go to like 2.2 or so. And this is just the process. As you can see, we're just adjusting slightly, hitting reload. And that's all you need. So look, we have it inside the box and it's inside the trailer. So we can see if we kind of shift ourselves. Whoops shift ourselves left and right. It's a little bit inside the trailer box. We're good. Now, if we get out, the next thing we see is, oh wait, number one, it's not in the center. And number two, it's not long enough. So let's go ahead and change both of those. Switch to the code. Let's make the length about, oh, I don't know, five. Then let this, they'll see they're in the same order, width, height, length. This length offset is only offset 0.3. Let's go to like to 1.0 and see if that's enough to be offset to the back. So we're going to hit save. We're going to switch back to the game. We're going to hit our tilde key. We're going to hit the up arrow, get our configuration, hit enter. And then we're going to get out of this menu by hitting the tilde key again. And let's look at it. Hmm. Oh, it looks like the length is pretty spot on. Look at that. It's right up to the end of the end of the trailer. Oh, it's sticking out a little bit here. So it's almost centered and it's almost the right length. We're doing real good. Let's go ahead and switch back to the code and adjust those slightly. So we're going to offset it a little bit more to the back. We're going to make it a little bit less long. So we're going to do 4.8. We're going to hit save. We're going to switch back to the game. We're going to open our menu again, hit the tilde key twice to get this menu, to get the ability to type, hit the up arrow, enter, hit the tilde key again to close it. And as you can see, now we're pretty much spot on. It's right inside the trailer. If we jump up in the trailer, we look, this is right inside the edge of the trailer there just barely inside the edge of the trailer there. That's pretty, pretty close. That's about as close as we're going to get it. The width is still good. The width could actually go a little bit wider. You see, it's not all the way up to the edges and you want it to get as much of the width as possible within the trailer so it can fit and stack the pallets and bales properly. So let's, let's make it a little bit wider. Switch back to the code. 
going to make our width, say 2.3. And each of these, anytime we change this, we're just changing a tenth of a meter. Switch back to the game and reload our configuration. And again, this is the process you're going to follow for all these vehicles and just keep doing it. And now we've gotten a little bit closer um, to the edge. I might tweak that a little bit more um, and go 2.4. That should be it. Now, the other thing, I'm going to go back into the game. I'm not going to reload just yet, but obviously we're not going to be able to fit very many um, pallets in here because it's not very tall. So let's go up to about the height of the tractor. That's a good measure, maybe a little bit above. So right now, if we look at the code, the height is set at one, so one meter. So let's go to like, mm, let's go to 2.4. Doesn't necessarily matter, we're just guessing at this point, but 2.4. Save, go back to the game. And now, as you can see, we have a nice bounding box of the trailer. All of that space is you're going to be able to put pallets or bales into. It's within the bounds of the trailer. It's not too high. And now let's test it. Let's see, see what we can fit in here. So let's go ahead and load some pallets in. So the next step here is to actually try to load some stuff. So the old way method that most people would use is they spawn some pallets and then try loading them. Universal auto load actually has commands built in to help us with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get into our vehicle and we're going to try it out. So we're in our vehicle. We have our trailer here. You can see the zone. We can see the zones up. Oh, it's not connected. Let's make sure it's connected. It won't work unless it's connected. We're going to open our console and type UAL add. And then we're going to hit the tab key. As you can see, we're going to be able to add bales and add, add pallets. We can add specific types of bales. Let's start with the pallets. So we're going to add pallets. Let's just add egg pallets just to see what happens. So we're going to use add pallets egg, and then we're going to hit return. And as you can see, it starts to load pallets. But oh, oh, I think we have a problem. And this is good to know. You see how the egg pallets, when they loaded, are hitting the front end of the trailer? That's going to be a problem. So let's fix it. Let's take our loading zone that we have for the width of our trailer, which I think is really going to the edges. Let's move it in a little bit. So we're gonna have to move it in and we're gonna have to recenter it a little bit. So let's do that. So we're gonna get out of our menu. We're gonna switch back over to the configuration and let's take this length down by a 10. Let's go to 4.7. And because we're going down to 4.7, we should probably move it back. So this negative 1.1, maybe let's do negative 1.15. And let's see what that does. So we're gonna hit save. We're gonna switch back to the game. And we're going to, whoops, wrong button. And we're gonna hit our up arrow and go to re-import our configurations. Re-imports the configurations. And the nice thing about it is when we re-import the configuration when we're in the vehicle, it reconnects the trailer, restarts the vehicle. So all you have to do is add, add the bales again. So, or pallets. So we're gonna hit the up arrow twice, add pellet egg. And this time, as you can see, they're not all kind of all over the place. They stack within a good amount of space in between in front of in the pallet. Not sure why that one's loading a little bit weird, but for the most part, it loads. Let's try a different type of pallet. Let's try wool pallets. Those ones are kind of weird shaped. Now you can just go ahead and add. Uh, it doesn't seem to care. It will just automatically remove what was there before and add them back in. As you can see, we can also, let's say we want to get out of our menu real quick. Uh, let's hit U to change the unloading side. So now you can see with the little boxes that it's giving, that's where it'll unload. If we unload, it unloads there. If we reload, we're gonna hit Shift R and reload it back into the to pallet. As you can see, everything loads in, no problems. Well, that's looking good. Let's see about bales. So we're going to go open our console command again. We're going to go to UI, UAL add, add round bales. Let's do add round bales, 125. And so this is going to remove everything that's in there and then it's going to add round bales. Enter, boom. Now here, oh wait, 
That seems a little weird. Universal Auto has the ability to kind of kitty corner these and kind of stagger them so that they can fit more than just three rows in there. But I think, you know, one time, one thing that make, makes sense is that we've set our width to be exactly 2.4 or 2.5. And if we look at our code, our width is 2.4. And if we just tweak this width just by a slight amount, by 0 0.01 or 0 0.02, save and go back to the game and let's try reloading the configuration as far as you can see nothing changed but that little extra little bit that little magic number there is going to allow them to when they load kind of stagger and oh look instead of just loading two rows which was a total of six bales now we're loading 12 bales that's Great. That loads so many more bales in here, and that gives us everything that we need. Let's try loading some more bales. Let's go. Let's add some big round bales. Let's add 180s. Those are big. Boom. And we're not going to be able to get fit more in there because it's not. A, it's a pretty small trailer, but that's pretty normal. Let's add square bales. 180 square bales. Boom. Well, it looks like when it does square bales, it does. Uh, Hey, I'm sorry, straw. That's nice. Square bills fit nice. Let's do 220s. 220s fit nice. 240s. These are big. 240s fit nice. They're actually right up against the edges of the, the trailer. They're glitching a little bit. If you wanted the 240s, these kept bales to not glitch through the or float through the sides, then maybe you'd want to take the size down from 240 but if you take the size down from 240 for square bales you're going to have to, you're not going to be able to fit the round bales in here so it's really up to you how you want to have that configuration we'll talk a little bit more about kind of going outside the bounds of the trailer when we get to the next vehicle um but that's essentially it so uh, what we did here is we loaded all of these things in we added all of the the triggers we can actually test all of the rest of the stuff so we can unload here so we're going to get out of our menu. We're going to unload and we can get out of our vehicle now. Now we have these pallets in the game or sorry, bales in the game. And you can load if you didn't know from outside the vehicle. You're going to stand next to the trailer, hit shift R, which is going to load them in one, two, three, four, five, six done. And these little boxes here are showing where it's going to unload into perfect. If you go on and get rid of anything that was loaded via universal auto load, we're going to go in here. We're going to do U A L. Clear, hit tab, clear loaded objects. And, oh wait, it didn't do anything. That's because the console commands for adding or loading don't work unless you're inside the vehicle. So you have to be inside the an attached vehicle or the vehicle itself. So let's go back in here and do clear loaded objects. Boom, they're gone. That was pretty easy, right? Let's go and just do the same process again We'll go a little bit faster this time and I'll probably speed up the video just so you can see how it works with a different vehicle. So let's exit out. Let's go over to here to this monstrosity. That bed is going to be able to fit a lot. Now that we're here, we're going to do what we did before. Remember what we're going to do is we're going to go to our file explorer. We're going to look at the, the name of the file. We're going to do this. We're going to copy. We're going to switch over to our code. We're going to switch back and forth a little bit here. We're just going to paste this in here for now, just to make sure we didn't lose it. We're going to take this configuration that we just did. We like this one and paste it in, copy this, put this here. And we don't know the, the name of the vehicle inside the zip file. So we need to switch back to our Explorer window. We need to unzip it kind of quickly. And it's just TGX 26. 640.xml. So TGX 26640. Is that right? 26640. Got it. Save. And we're just going to leave the same configuration we have in the last vehicle. This time, we're going to turn the debug on the last vehicle off because we don't need it anymore because that one's done. This time, let's gonna, we're going to enable rear loading and we're going to enable side loading just for fun to see what it does. So I'm going to hit save. 
So here we are back in the game. And as you can see, we got the configuration loaded. So if you do get a situation where you load in a new configuration or you add a new configuration, it's not showing up, just reload the game. Now we're looking at our configuration. Our configuration is, this is this configuration for that trailer, not what we want, but these extra boxes we, should, we added in, these little layers, this is for side loading. So these are just triggers for side loading. And I think that's actually gonna be in our way. So let's tweak those, take those off and tweak the settings a little bit to get it to move faster. So I'm gonna jump out, back to the code. Turn, turn both in side loading and rear loading off. I'm gonna tweak the length to about, let's say about eight, see how far, how it goes there. We're gonna, this is the offset from the ground. We're gonna update, update it a little bit. Just go to 1.3, just move it up a little bit. And we're gonna leave the, this offset alone for now. Save, and then we're gonna switch back to the game. We're back in the game. We're gonna reload the configuration. And let's see how it looks. This configuration looks pretty good. Um, we do have a little bit of a problem with the configuration going into the cab. Um, so we need to offset it the back, but the size looks good. The width looks good. Height looks pretty good. We could probably go taller. This trailer is going to hold a lot of stuff. So I'd probably go a little bit taller. Let's try to do all of that all at once. All right, we're back in the code. We're going to change the offset here. Uh, this is the vertical offset. We're going to change that to about 1.3. We're going to change the offset to the rear to back to 2.0. We'll see how that works. The width we're going to leave alone for now. The height we're going to change all the way up to 4.0. I'd like to be able to stack bales three high on here. And so we're going to need some additional height. Let's see how that works. Save. We're going to switch back to the game and we're going to reload the configuration. Now we have something that's working pretty well. If you notice our configuration here is a little bit high off the deck. It does seem to be aligned to the back bumper pretty well. This could be a problem. So see how we have this into the corner of the, I don't know what this is a fairing. We probably want to move it back just a bit. We probably want to move it down just a bit and then we'll try to load pallets in. So we're going to switch back to the code real quick. Let's do to 1.28 or so. And then we're going to leave our height alone. And then we're going to jump back just a little bit more. It's 2.05. Hit save. We're going to switch back to the game. And we're going to reload one more time. Perfect. Now it's nice and close. It's just above the deck, which is what we want. And this is just behind this fairing, which we're afraid it could possibly collide with, especially because there's a little lip at the top that could push bales back and cause bales to have problems stacking. Now, let's go into the vehicle and let's try to load some bales. We're gonna go into our menu. We're gonna use universal auto loads, uh, built-in things to load bales. UAL add round bales 125. Let's see how many fit. Whoa camera got a little jostled there but as you can see we're loading bales three high that's a lot of bales that's pretty awesome that's what one two three four five six times three is gonna be 18 and 18 is gonna be 36 bales that's a ton of bales here we are if we loaded the 125 bales i would like them to be stacked side by side just for a little bit optimal i don't i don't like the fact that it's hanging over the edge here so let's just optimize this trailer for the 125 bales and make it just a little bit wider. So let's switch back over to the code. And let's change this width to about 2.65. And we're doing that to just give it a little bit of extra width to see if the bales will fit. Go in here, import configurations, add the bales. Perfect. They're going side by side. I think they're loading a little bit weird like this just because of how this auto load script works when we're force loading them in. We can unload them. We can unload, whoops. Unload them to the side if we want. 
and then load them back in, they should load back in much better. When, it, when it's a little bit too fast, they don't load right for some reason. So let's load them in fast, slow. Look at that. They stack perfectly. That's exactly what we want. Let's test some other bills. Um, we're going to go to 150s. 150s load great. I think that's about what we want for this trailer. 150s, you try to load any more on the trailer, it's just going to be too heavy. We're already at 97,000 liters. 180, 180s are fine as well. We're loading 12 180s and 15 150s. That's great. Um, we're gonna opt. If the trailer was wider, we'd be able to load more, but I don't think it's all logical. Let's try some pallets. So we're gonna UAL add pallet egg. <laughs> How many egg pallets can we get on here? Look at this. That's just a multitude of egg pallets. Now, egg pallets, I think by default, they stack at five high as a maximum. So they're not going all the way to the top of our bounding box, but that's okay. Um, let's check wool. That was the other one we were trying before. And there we go. Look at that. Three high for the wool, which is great. Um, wool isn't going to be as heavy as the, the eggs. And we're getting 54,000 liters in here, so that's... That's good for me. I'd call that configuration done. And we'll do this one last test and we'll call it this one. We're going to do off stream. So the Unimog, it's got this little teeny tiny trailer. We're probably not going to want to do anything crazy with it. So let's first start by getting the bounding box. We'll go over that really quickly one more time and we'll go from there. So let's switch back to the Explorer this time. We're going to go into, we're going to copy this, copy that string, go over our code, paste it temporarily, go back over to our Explorer window, temporarily unzip this. We're going to go, oh, where's the file? It's here in the XML, Unimog, XML.Unimog. That's pretty easy to remember. Switch back to the code. We're going to copy the first configuration because it's going to be closer in size. Put this here. And path was XML slash Unimog. For this one, we're going to switch back to our small, small box. So 1.0. We're going to go well, 1.0 here. And 1.0 for the length because the bed of that thing is pretty small. False, 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 but show debug true. We don't need the debug on this one anymore. Perfect. Let's switch back to the game and see how that looks. Back in the game. Let's reload the configuration one more time. And And as we can see, this configuration is not there. So we're gonna have to reload the game and we'll come back. So what we're gonna do, I'll reload the game, I'll get a good configuration going and we'll come back when that configuration is ready. We'll see how it goes. And here we go, we're back in the game with a really good configuration. As you can see, we've got the configuration just inside the box, the tail of the bed. It sticks out the back just a little bit and that's gonna be because we wanna get two rows of pallets in here. Um, this back, yellow region here is for rear loading. So if we're passing something into the rear, it'll automatically auto load. And then as you see, it loads pretty high, but that's only for to get what we want in here, but it's still relative to the vehicle. Let's test it. Let's, let's get in the vehicle, let's add some pallets. So we're gonna add some pallets. Let's add some egg pallets. This is what I tested for this vehicle. And there we go. We got six egg pallets. The vehicle's still doing good on its suspension. We only got six pallets. It's no big deal. Um, because this is a little farm trailer, a farm truck, it's not going to be used for very much. Let's clear those out. And then I think the other thing that this is probably going to be used for, if you actually do use it, is clear, is really you're going to be loading things a seed from the store and taking them home. That's it. 
that's those configurations. Let's actually look at that configuration real quick. We switch back over to our code. There's the configuration for the Unimog. All three of these configurations I'll include in the description so that if you want to use these same configurations in your configuration file, feel free. Um, we got a height of about 1.42. Again, we're using that little bit of extra two one hundredths to make sure that it has extra space for loading. Height is at 1.8 just to get six pallets. And the length is 1.7, but it's sticking over the back end just a little bit. That's it. We've got three vehicles, all with a universal auto load. They'll load whatever you want. And we've got them tested to this thing's a transporter, so it's going to transport a lot. This thing's a little farm truck, so it's just going to load a little bit, but that's the way we want it. And we took a trailer that didn't have auto load, but now it does. That's going to be it. All of the code for these will be in the description. And to get these scripts and to be able to configure auto load in this way, we you will need the version 1.2.0.0 of universal auto load to be coming to mod hub as an update soon. If you'd like to get it sooner than that, you can try, you can click the link in the discord and get it from the beta releases of GitHub for Loki's universal auto load. But otherwise we're done. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions at all, please hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to drop a like and we'll catch you guys next time for another mod snippet or mod tutorial. Thanks for watching.